Hello again, struck to up. Um, I am back with some more Diabu 4 um, news. Um, Diabu 4 news have been everywhere this week um, and this month um, so far. Um, IGN did uh, an interview with Joe Shelley and Rod Ferguson uh, and they've separated it in um, different easier to digest segments. Um, and um, this one is another video that hopefully releases today on the 8th, um, if not maybe tomorrow. Um, regarding um, class mechanics, class identity, as well as um, a preview of uh, the new skill tree um, version that we've, some of you might have seen in leaked uh, endgame um, beta footage. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you like it. I personally really love what they've done um, with that so far. So buckle up and let's go. Uh, we have another video centered um, on um, specifically the skill trees, but in this one we will mention the new version of the skill trees. But what we will talk about is uh, class mechanics, what keeps classes unique, and how they're designing the classes. Further on, um, let's uh, let's dig into that specific matter um, at the beginning. Um, in their words, they want classes to shine in their own way. Um, and they want uh, us to have uh, as many choices uh, as possible, increasing the choices we have when it comes to customizing the character it wants us to um to it wants every class to feel compelling in its own um way um and that's uh, that's their core philosophy and uh, a very good example a fine example is the necromancer and how it has a mechanic called the book of the dead uh it um it lets necromancer uh, players choose how to play uh when it comes to the army do they go for a massive army of skeletons, but not uh, not a golem? Or do they go with just one minion, a big, massive, powerful, boosted golem, building around that golem with items and passives and actives and so on, and adding a bunch of curses and things like that, and corpse explosion, for example. It's always fun to have corpse explosion. Um, another thing that is unique to the Necromancer is the corpses. Um, now, speaking of, of corpse explosions, we can't not mention that. Um, there will be this mini beam, like like uh, wood drop beams, but shorter, that doesn't go all the way up. Um, that uh, that stays on top of uh, dead uh, enemies. And that means this body is ready. This body is ready to be used by you. Or how you're going to use it, whether you want to use necromancy and make a summon, or whether you want to explode it, um, or do something else that the game allows you to do with it, um, it's up to you. And this thing adds depth, in their words, adding depth without adding too much complexity. I hope that really is the case, because we know um, many games add a lot of depth, a lot of depth, and even more depth to, to classes and building and build diversity, but then they fail to balance it. Um, the, the, the deeper, the more complex the game and the deeper the game is, the harder it gets to balance. So Blizzard, um, Diablo 4 team, you have a lot to do when it comes to balance. I hope you don't disappoint. I hope you don't make us only play um, the best builds because the rest um, are shit. And when I say build, I mean fully properly synergized build with the right items, the right skills. Um, just a proper good build that um, that is not me um, using certain skills and then wearing items that boost completely other things. I mean, using the right items for the right build I hope that you balance it in such a way where you don't feel just only only building around that skill is good because the rest cannot do the hardest content. Even the weakest build should do the, the hardest content, uh, ideally with as least as possible gap between the strongest and the weakest. But um, I'm fine to, to do things slower as long as I enjoy my build. Um, because if I don't enjoy what um, what is the most effective, and when I say most effective, I mean most effective, not only effective. Meta, not Weta and M E not O E, and that's that's uh, my philosophy. Hopefully, you agree with me. Now, as I mentioned, they they have um, mentioned something about the, the skill trees, they've gone through four designs. I will have a separate video for skill trees, but um, the current October version of the skill trees feels right compared to the previous uh, three versions of it. Um, they're mentioning that it changed dramatically over time, and yes, I've seen screenshots, uh, I've covered in my previous videos about Diablo 4 some of those old versions, um, and um, since Alpha, that's version number 4, it looks much better than the previous ones. Um, and it was all possible thanks to 
player feedback uh, and what the fans have been telling them. So um, I would do a comparison here between Torchlight 3 and how Torchlight 3 in Alpha and Beta changed its own skill tree up to, um, up to I think, three or four times uh, and its final version, it was uh, much better than in its first version. So maybe something similar has happened here. Um, and yeah, Max Schaefer's team did skills right in Torchlight 3, in my opinion, although they did other things wrong. And those things they did wrong were actually uh, based on player feedback and requests. So sometimes you have to be careful how much you listen to your player base, because sometimes player base might think of what's good for them right now, but not what's good for the game and its future. Um, so hopefully um, Diablo 4 team knows that uh, it's good to listen to your community, but you shouldn't listen to every single thing um, that the majority of players want. Sometimes you gotta think about the game's future. Um, so they're saying this, quote, providing opportunity and choice while not overwhelming players. Um, they're quoting that as uh, the major main goal um, when they've uh, thought about how to design the, the skill trees and paragons uh, systems. Um, they want players uh, not to go and look at certain builds uh, and so on. I mean, it's still nice to look at certain builds if you don't, uh, if you want to save time um, and just follow blindly this, 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 this. And um, that's fine. That's the type of content I would be making. But um, not everyone wants to do that. Uh, some people want to just do it in the game and that, that was their um, goal. They wanted players to be able to make their own build um, without uh, out and tabbing and watching a video or reading a guide. Um, so I like that they want to simplify the process of making a build, um, making it easier to decide, okay, I want a build for this skill. I obviously need to pick those passives. They are right next to it. Um, I want to use those items there, um, saying this skill um, boost those, um, is boosted by those items and so on. So yeah, um, they want players to, to be able to theorycraft their own builds uh, and it's um, a priority, an important thing to them. And they're saying in, in, in quotes, richness of progression. Um, um, in Diablo 2's character progression. Um, they're, they're, they're saying about that richness of progression um, in Diablo 2's character progression. And um, Ferguson feels that this sense of progression um, is present in Diablo 4. And further on, um, they're talking a little bit about respecting and character builds. And as I mentioned, um, um, they want some permanence. Um, and um, see, they, 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 they want us to be able to make the, our own builds, but they want also some sort of permanence. And um, here is where I'm a little bit disappointed when they say permanence, the way they worded it. They, they, they made slip of the tongue saying millions when it comes to respect costs. They said early on it's cheap and easy. And yes, I can confirm, I've watched leaked footage uh, of early level um, endgame only beta testers. And, um, and what I saw uh, in those particular two leaks, uh, one Necromancer, one Rogue, Early on, they could do full respects for pennies. Um, pretty much uh, negligible cost for full respects. And considering they didn't have much to respect anyways, that was even even easier to respect. Like the, the, the 7, 8 points you have, the 20, 30 points you have, easy to respect and so on. So you can respect point by point or fully. Uh, it's up to you. And... Um, they're, they're mentioning something about Diablo 2 and how um, um, you would um, have abilities that also appear as modifiers on items. Um, again, you would get nudged towards testing those. You find a new item and, okay, I, I, I want to change my build because I've got better gear for that skill. Um, so, yeah, I want to respect. And as you, as you level up uh, early on, they don't want you to, to feel restricted um, and they want you... To, to make the best uh, of whatever lemons the game throws your way. Make the best lemonade you can with those lemons. And that's why respecting is cheap early on in the game. But they're saying that they want some permanence. And uh, later on in the game, um, it would be expensive um, to the point where some people might even um, want to, to re-roll a new character of the same class. Um, hopefully that's not really, really expensive. Hopefully with half an hour of grinding, I can fully earn my max level total respect. Uh, any more than that would be boring and uh, and uh, force me into grinding uh, unreasonably um, before respecting. We'll see. Um, hopefully um, 
if if they want to force me to make new classes to try completely different builds there's two things that need to happen first of all there should be a way to boost low level characters to max level if max level is 100 i should be able to get that in like 10 hours no more ideally the faster the better um to 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 join a, a level 100 character that takes me to level 100 content um as my level one character like we could do in Diablo 3 we could boost ourselves to max level very very quickly and hopefully um, the second thing that needs to happen is paragon levels should be shared for the whole account um i don't know whether that's the case i haven't talked to people who have been in the beta uh, i wouldn't want to make them uh, break their uh, nda but um, if they are not shared through the account then that's gonna be bad we'll see how that goes um, but again, if you want to quickly try out a new build, you might have to grind and that sits, that doesn't sit that well with me. So I hope they reconsider and I hope that slip of the tongue when they say uh, millions, um, that those millions would be something you earn easily, uh, when it comes to respecting a max level character. But there will be a video where I discuss specifically the skill trees. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, let's a little bit uh, talk about the Paragons. The Paragon trees, they also had different iterations, different versions. Um, they revealed the, the initial uh, prototype version that uh, was pretty much a 2D thing um, with simple dots. Um, and yeah, the Paragon board, um, it, it's different boards, different square boards, uh, which can connect to each other in all four corners, left, right, up, down. Um, and um, once you reach... Um, Let's say you start from the left, you go on um, one of the other three directions by unlocking nodes on the way. Those nodes would be uh, white, blue, uh, yellow, and orange. Obviously, normal, rare, um, normal, um, uncommon, rare, whatever they, they decide to name them. Obviously, you would want to go for where the bunches of orange nodes are, um, if you take that board. And what I hope is that they name those boards. If they don't name them, at least give them numbers. Ideally, they would have names like a Berserker, a Destroyer, Crusher, um, Storm Tempest, uh, or Tempest, uh, or, or Hellfire, uh, or whatever, something. Just pick some, some names that would be definitive of that Paragon board. So when a friend asks me, hey, what, what board are you using on your uh, Barbarian? I can say, ah, I'm using the, the Crusher, the, the Earthshaker, or whatever. Oh, okay, that, that's nice. I want to try this one. Um, um, and I'm, I, I can say I'm also using the, the, the Defender or whatever for survival. Video. Okay, I'm going to try this one and so on. So I love that system. I love how they have glyphs and how they have sockets and where you can place um, those glyphs into those sockets similar to Path of Exile's gems that can be placed in certain socketed uh, skill tree nodes um, to boost the nearby um, uh, passive nodes that we've taken. Um, and again, that um, that you have those legendary clusters where you want to go get that legendary cluster on your way to, to the exit, um, to one of the three uh, remaining exits of that uh, node. And I like how you can rotate um, uh, the board um, in that any of the four directions could be in any of the other places. Um, you cannot make changes to which exit is where, but you can rotate it uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, whatever, um, that way. It's looking good. The respecting and the character builds progression, it's looking good. So Blizzard has a big job to do when it comes to balancing and I hope they don't disappoint in that regard. To get notified when I upload more content like this one or other builds and guides for Wooter and not so Wooter games, you can subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to not miss out on notifications. As well as uh, keep in mind there's something called memberships on YouTube which lets you be uh, a paying member for my channel to get access to perks such as emotes and badges made by me as well as the option to get one-on-one uh, -on -one tutoring for the very basics of Adobe Photoshop, Premiere and After Effects and memberships can be cancelled at any time if you no longer want to be a member. Uh, thanks for watching all the way until the end, Struck Club, keep it cool, until next time and goodbye.